Hey, and we have our guest, Marty Joins from Intercept Your Lunch. Marty, how's it going? It's been a while. Hey, hey how's it going, guys? You guys hear me well? Yep. All right. Like your, uh, like screen. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I built it myself just two minutes before the show. But uh, I appreciate uh, the invite. Yeah, it has been a while and excited to talk NFL football. I don't know if we're too excited to talk about this Week 18 matchup, but we're excited to talk football, so let's do it. Absolutely. I think there's a lot of uh, good things to talk about. And a quick comment here from Steve saying, the Wolves are out and Gettleman is wearing a steak necklace. Interesting <laughs> comment there by Steve. Funny one as well. It's a great one. Thanks for the comment, Steve. But Marty, back in week two, the Giants lost to Washington 30-29. to A game the Giants led for majority of the game. But obviously, that game felt like it was in a different season at this point with how long this season has been entering week 18. It was a game where Graham Gano kicked five field goals. Perfect uh, way to define our <laughs> season. Jonathan Allen had two sacks for Washington. And Taylor Heineke threw for over 300 yards in that game with two touchdown passes. So Taylor Heineke, Marty, just talk to me about him. What are your overall thoughts on him? Because I wasn't so sure he'd be the starting quarterback for the entire season, but with Fitzpatrick out, he's held his own. Certainly. Uh, he definitely played better than expected. Uh, do I believe he's the answer for 2022? Absolutely not. Do I believe that he solidified himself in a backup role, if not here in Washington, somewhere else in the NFL? Absolutely. I mean, just the way that he commands an offense. He's been in for a few years. But I think the key to him is his mobility. He's super athletic. People don't give him enough credit for that. I mean, he runs four or five. He can get out of that pocket and scramble. He can get out of sacks, and he can move to help a pretty – bad offensive line play at some points of the season. So I think NFL scouts around, if he was to be sent packing, um, would definitely jump on him for a backup veteran case. Absolutely. Now, Washington is coming off a 20-16 to loss to the Philadelphia Eagles. Eagles have clinched a playoff berth. And, of course, the infamous fall from the fans on Jalen Hurts as the rail gave out. Uh, not, not, not a good look there for either organization. But um, this this game, Washington was in this game. I got to give rookie running back Jarrett Patterson a lot of credit. Kid from Buffalo had a touchdown, five catches for forty one yards. Yeah. What's the situation at running back right now? Do we know who's starting on Sunday? Is it Gibson? Is it McKissick? Is it Patterson? Yeah, I, uh, right now I believe it would be Patterson. Gibson's still a little limped up, and I would I would feel that Patterson would get the ball just due to the fact that we're not playing for anything. Gibson's had a pretty solid year uh, with a four-game win streak especially. He was leading the NFL in those four weeks and actually um, was the top NFC rusher. Uh, so he's definitely had production, but Jarrett Patterson, like you mentioned, He's been a guy who in the preseason was a fan favorite, really latched onto this team, taking that identity of just trying to be a guy to do something for a team each week, and he did great last week. So we'll see if he can get some holes there in New York. Absolutely. Now, Hank, you're going to go over some of the X's and O's here for the folks at home as the Giants and Washington, both towards the bottom of the NFL in several categories this season including defense. Yeah, for sure. And I think the big thing I got to ask you is with the way Washington's defense has been so poorly, how surprised are you that that's been the case? Oh, it, it was super surprising, right? I mean, the way that we finished the season off last year, I guess some tough competition, I'll say, but not as tough as we saw this year, but it was definitely surprising the way that they definitely started. Again, I, I go back to that four-game win streak. We were te holding teams to 15 points, though. So there's a very small sliver where we were working on both sides of the ball effectively, and hopefully they can use that for this offseason as motivation to get that defense back to where it needs to be. Obviously, you spent first-round pick on Jamin Davis this past NFL draft out of Kentucky. <laughs> 
Cole Holcomb has been the leading tackler. Um, Cameron Curl has been a nice surprise. Seventh round pick last year. Obviously, Landon Collins is there. Another former giant, David Mayo, has been a starting linebacker in recent weeks. So there's a lot of uh, solid players on that team. I think the biggest issue is not having Chase Young this season. He seems to be the catalyst on your defense, Marty. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm still concerned because the Giants, look, Guys, they're a very injury-plagued team. Beat reporter Dan Duggan put out a tweet this week. Linebacker Quincy Roche, cornerback James Bradbury, and punter Riley Dixon are the only Giants to be full participants at every practice this season. And wow. I think it's it's really just demoralizing to hear that, and it all – leads up to Jake Fromm starting at quarterback (laughs) on Sunday, who I hope he does well. But, Marty, honestly, does Jake Fromm bring anything (laughs) to the table that scares you as a fan? Uh, No. I mean, if if this was a win and get in (laughs) scenario and I had to say Jake stayed from, it definitely (laughs) would make me feel a lot easier, right? I mean, going against the Eagles, what was he? I looked at his stats before jumping on the show, 6 of 17, 25 yards and an interception. I mean, that's, that's not great stats. Jake Fromm, a guy out of Georgia, I thought that would have, I thought he would have been more progressed at this point. He played a lot of ball down in Georgia. But it just doesn't seem like his game's translating. It doesn't help that the Giants right now are, like you said, a lot banged up and Barkley still, still, I think, recovering from that injury. But um, regardless, I just feel like if I said if this was a win and get in, I'd be smiling ear to ear as a fan that might potentially want to lose this game for a better draft pick. The Jake Fromm kind of scares me. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else there is to say because Mike Lennon was a disaster and Jake Fromm's even more of a disaster, right? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it, it it's it's really tough. Uh, mm-hmm. Luckily, though, for the Giants, there are some reinforcements. Uh, Jake Fromm might have Darius Slayton coming off the COVID list in addition to Dexter Lawrence and Danny Shelton on that defensive line. But, Hank, unfortunately – Rookie edge rusher Ellerson Smith heading to IR. His season only lasted eight games, four tackles and two quarterback hits. A fourth-round pick from Dave Gettleman that, quite frankly, hasn't panned out so far, which gives us another reason as to why he has to go. Yep. It's funny listening to you guys talk about Dave Gettle and coaching issues. I I definitely don't envy envy you guys there. No. Um. (laughs) Chris Myrick was waived yesterday, claimed by the Cincinnati Bengals. Isaiah Wilson terminated from the practice squad. I mean, we're a mess. But, Marty, our next question for you is this. Charles Leno has agreed to a three-year, $37.5 million extension. He is the 18th-ranked tackle on PFF this season. What are your thoughts on this extension? Do you like it? Yeah, I mean, it's tough, right? Because we we did have Trent Williams, who mentioning the PFF rating is 98.3 right now. We did have him two years ago. We could have re-upped him. We didn't want to pay him. There were some medical issues as well on our end, um, medical mismanagement. But regardless, we let a guy like that walk. We were lucky enough to get Charles Leno this offseason, and he's been a great addition to the team. I'm just – uh, I just have that sore subject at left tackle because we definitely had a great one and we let him go. But Charles Leno's filled in great, and hopefully our future starting quarterback will feel safe with Leno on the blind side. Is there anybody you had in mind? Again, I don't want you to give away your uh, predictions for the 2022 offseason, but <laughs> where are you trending right now, depending on where Washington might pick in the draft, what they might do in free agency? What are you thinking at the quarterback position right now? Yeah. So if uh, Marty was the general manager of the Washington football <laughs> team, I'm calling John Snyder and asking for Russell Wilson, come on over, come to D.C., we love you here. You can be a political figure. And that would be – that's where I would have all of my attention driven to right now. I don't know if it's possible, feasible, but that's 
exactly where I would go. I think I'd let Deshaun Watson and that kind of call show, I'll say, just just find somewhere else, but focus on trying to get Russell Wilson draft wise, if that's not possible. I love the quarterback Sam Howe out of um, North Carolina. He would be my favorite per se. I know a lot of people like Kenny Pickett as well. Uh, two guys that played a lot of college ball, which I like. And um, but it's got to be Russell Wilson for me, man. We we've got to solidify that position. It's been twenty plus years of just terrible quarterback play. Yeah, I'm just thinking back to the days we had Mark Brunell, Patrick Ramsey, Jason Campbell. Yeah. A lot of guys. The list goes on and on and on. Rex I mean, Burton, just, John Beck, yeah. RG3. Yeah. John Beck. RG3. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, John it, Beck. You never know when I'm going to throw an obscure Todd name. Collins. Todd, Todd Collins. Todd Collins, too. Yeah. It's oh, funny. Man. It's funny my, uh, just sitting back and, you know, being a fan for the last 15 years and just solidly watching this team. I can for sure, without a doubt, say Kirk Cousins is the best quarterback I've ever seen play in a Redskin or Washington football team jersey. So it'll be interesting to see if we can make that better for me. Yeah, Kirk Cousins, very. I think he's a very underrated quarterback in this NFL. A mm -hmm. lot of people think he's overrated. I think the opposite. I think he's underrated. Um, yeah, I would take him back in a heartbeat too. If, if, if uh, you know, you guys know quarterback issues. You guys understand that. And, and just getting somebody who can be competent enough to win a few games sometimes – is enough. I don't need Aaron Rodgers. I don't need Patrick Mahomes. I just need a guy who won't throw an interception and might know half the playbook. Right. Exactly. <laughs> issues. That was foreign to us until a couple years ago. Certainly. <laughs> Very foreign. <laughs> um, too bad Daniel Jones is not playing in this game. He's had a lot of success against Washington. But, <laughs> yes, he has. <laughs> um, yes, he has. Hank, let's get into some keys to the game. We'll start with you here on this one. Um, what do you got for us? What's what's your biggest key to a Giants win on well, Sunday, which seems nearly impossible at this time? For starters, I don't know, maybe score points. I don't know. It sounds like a novel concept. <laughs> I mean, do you know how many you know how many touchdowns the Giants have scored in their last 35 possessions? Marty, I want you to Tom, I know you know the answer, so I'm not gonna make you guess. Marty, I want you to guess this one. I believe I saw this online, but it's zero. Actually, the correct answer is one, but you're pretty damn close. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marty laying question. down the hammer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and where are we ranked in scoring on offense? 31st, 15.7 points per game. Pathetic. And defensively, Washington has been allowing nearly 27 points per game. So, I'd like to think maybe things could change, but then again, as I've said numerous times on this show, the way the Giants have difficulty scoring touchdowns, you'd think they were trying to solve advanced calculus. Yeah, that's pretty much what they're trying to do out there, right? <laughs> Best weapon's been Evan Ingram all season long. Pro Bowl tight end. Unbelievable. <laughs> <sighs> uh, Marty, what is your key for – a Washington win on Sunday. Obviously, you know, there there's a lot around you guys this year. I mean, no Logan Thomas. Antonio Gibson's been banged up. I mean, you still got Scary Terry, who had a really good outing against the Giants yeah. the first time out. Yeah, yeah, he certainly did. And that's one player I'm going to look at. I know that's the, the big name for us, but just a key for him. He's 40 yards away from 1,000, so I'd love to see him do that. He was all – I think he was 50 or 60 yards in there short his rookie season to go and back to back to back 1,000 yards for a wide receiver, and that might not sound much to the average folk, but remember the quarterback situation that this guy's played with for the last three years. He's had over eight quarterbacks throw him passes, which is unheard of, and he's still getting production. So a name out there I think gets disrespected and underlooked at is him. But a key for this game in particular is run the ball. I mean, if the Washington football team wants to win this game, they've got to control the clock. Get Gibson and or Patterson, whoever's the horse for Sunday, 20-plus carries. I mean, that's the that's how we're winning ball games, and that's what we need to do to win on Sunday. 
And that's funny you bring that up because my key for the Giants is actually winning the battle in the trenches because back in week two, the Giants outrushed Washington 163-87. to 87. But if you remember in this game, Nick Gates went down with a season-ending, potential career-ending injury. Yeah. Shane Lemieux didn't play. And I'm not sure if Blake Martinez got hurt that week or the week after. I'm not sure if that was the Washington game, but the that Giants was pretty much – That was that was. That, okay, that was the Falcon game. But, tough. yeah, that Nick Gates injury was brutal, and since then the Giants haven't really been able to do much in the trenches. It's going to be guys like Billy Price, Matt Scura, Will Hernandez against Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne. I'm not very confident in that. On the other side, we're looking at former Giant Eric Flowers, who's made a nice career as a guard for himself. Brandon Scherf, the guy I wanted to draft six, seven years ago. And Keith Ishmael, the center, who isn't half bad. So I think Washington holds the edge there. And that's going to be Yes, key. certainly. Yeah, certainly. And Ishmael, is, uh, Keith Ishmael is the uh, fourth center on our roster. So uh, just, again, it'll be interesting to see if they can hold their own against the Giants' weak front. Absolutely. We have a comment from Garth Michael Patrick saying what's up. Checking in to show some quick support going hard in the gym right now. You see his Facebook profile picture is also <laughs> guard in the gym. He's a big L.A. Chargers fan, but he's also a big Gators fan. Rob Sale, the current Giants offensive line coach, to my Florida Gators when the season ends for O-line coach. I hate to say this, Garth, but you're probably correct. You're probably <laughs> correct. I think – Rob Sale got a lot more production out of a very bad Giants offensive line this year than Mark Colombo or uh, the replacement who came in last year did. De Guglielmo. So, De Guglielmo, yeah. I'm surprised you remember his name, but um, <laughs> Googs, we call them. But, yeah, I mean, we suck. Uh, there's not much more to really talk. We're losing our offensive line coach, probably the only good offensive positional coach that we have, but defensively, I think you got to pressure Taylor Heineke. You know, I think Lorenzo Carter could cause some problems. Aziz Ojolari has eight sacks on the season. Quincy Roche has been a nice pickup as well for New York, but Washington has great weapons and Terry McLaurin and Cam Sims, who Marty, it seems every time the Giants play Washington, Cam Sims catches like a 40, 50 yard pass. At least yeah, once he's, every time. he definitely has your number in the sense of uh, big time plays. He's been doing that his whole career here. He de he doesn't get the opportunities. He doesn't get the looks. I don't know if it's because of ability or just coaching, but when he does, he definitely shines, and he's done that against you guys a few times. He has. Uh, Steve says, Hank is the rain man of Giants football knowledge. Oh, wow. <laughs> Steve, that's high praise. I love that movie, by the way. That's one of Dustin Hoffman's best. Hank, I think there's one more key we forgot. Uh, it, it's your favorite one. I think it's a key for both teams, for Washington and the Giants. Um, hmm, I don't know. Maybe when your defense is on a third down, maybe, I don't know, get off the field. Would be nice. Another novel concept. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is a novel concept because the Giants are pretty bad at doing it. Uh, usually the method to beating the Giants is creating some turnovers or just getting off the field yourself and then tiring out the defense. And that's what Marty alluded to before. Pound the rock and you'll be yeah. fine. You know, Giants yep. special teams has been pretty bad as well as of late, which is shocking because we have a, a spe former special teams coordinator as our head coach. So <laughs> That's Marty, alarm. Uh, Marty, what's your opinion on Joe Judge? From the outside looking in, he's just a guy who's a lot of rah-rah and uh, he doesn't seem to get the per performance or production out of his players. Um, I know he was an, uh, an under-the-radar hire when it did happen. A lot of people said who. A lot of people think that if they can get somebody who even sat in the same room as Bill Belichick could potentially turn their franchise around. If I were the Giants, I would probably clean house and start fresh. I don't think Joe Judge is the answer, especially if you're trying to find that quarterback guru whisper. Interesting. Yeah. 
-hmm. I think a lot of outsiders agree with you that Joe Judge should go. Um, yeah. You know, that's where a lot of outsiders are, are leaning right now. I think really the only people that are really defending him are like the hardcore Giants fans that are very close knit to the team or former players who work with him behind closed doors. I think those are the only people that really want him to, to, to stay, but uh, we'll see what happens. So moving on, we have our players to watch segment and Marty, we'll start with you here as the guest. Who are your players to watch for Washington? And then, since the Giants stink, you can give us like one, one, one player who you really think stands out to you. But let's start with Washington here. <laughs> uh, I think for Washington, a guy who's been in the news this week, Ron Rivera's talked about him as tight end Sammy Reyes. Um, folks might not know too much about him. He's only played sparingly. Uh, we signed him through the international program. Never played football before in his life. Played here this year. Um, he's definitely going to get some opportunities. I think this is going to be his interview. Um, if he can go out, catch a few balls, block well, I think he'll get a shot to make the team next year. But if he comes out and lays a stinker, uh, he's definitely going to be looking for another career path, I believe, in the NFL or in other, other sports. Definitely. I think that's, that's definitely a good player. Um, Anybody else that stands out to you, maybe on the defensive side of the ball, that could cause the yeah. Giants' offense some problems? Certainly. Uh, you've mentioned him before, but I believe he's another underrated player for the Washington football team, safety Cameron Curl. Uh, when we were getting beat up by the NFC East opponents, he was out due to COVID, unfortunately, for that first Cowboys game and the first Eagles game. So he's another guy, great player. Um, he's definitely the glue that keeps the defense together. I know we have a lot of big names, but his tackling on the back end is something uh, that we haven't seen here in a very long time. And we're, we're fortunate enough to get him, and uh, hopefully he can stick around for a few more years. Yeah, I think he's a really good player to watch. Um, Hank, what about you? Who are you looking out for for Washington this week? Ooh, that's a good question. I think one guy I would have to look out for, obviously Scary Terry. I mean, 11 catches, 107 yards on touchdown. This was back in week two. Now, Marty, fun fact about that performance. Scary Terry was actually the first Washington receiver since Pierre Garcon to have a 100-yard performance. So wow. that tells you how big of a deal that is. And – I think he will definitely be a big test for our secondary. So I think he's, he's definitely a no brainer for me and guys to watch. Yeah, he definitely uh, will be uh, interesting to see what he can do. Yeah. He'll probably surpass a thousand yards on the season on Sunday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to monitor that. And I think for me, at least JD McKissick is a guy to look out for as well, especially if you're looking to move the chains on third down the Giants tend to struggle against backup running backs who can catch the ball. Boston Scott is a prime example for the Philadelphia Eagles. But for Washington, I think McKissick, five catches, 83 yards back in week two, 43 catches on a season, if, especially if Gibson can't play. He'll see an uptick in work, whether it's in third down situations or in pass protection. I think he's a guy. And I'm also scared of Jonathan Allen. 28 quarterback hits this season to go with eight and a half sacks, 10 tackles for loss. He started all 16 games, and PFF has him ranked as the fifth best interior defensive lineman in the entire NFL. So those he's, are – He's definitely – he's definitely been playing solid, took that step that we needed. A lot of first-round draft picks on that defensive line, but Jonathan Allen took those reins when Jack Del Rio came in and hasn't looked back has definitely been playing the best football of his career and of any of those players on that defensive line. Yeah, he's been really good. He's been fun to watch. And then you get to that second level, you got Cole Holcomb right there waiting to swallow you up if you somehow get past that Washington uh, front yeah. in, the, in the trenches. 131 An tackles on the season. Another underrated player. Yeah. A uh, couple former Giants, Hank. Landon Collins <laughs> and, da and David Mayo – uh, 
Mayo has 27 tackles and three starts this season. Landon Collins, 81 tackles, three sacks, two picks. So he's not putting up numbers he did when he was on the Giants, but you know he's also a bit older now. Washington also has a better defense where you know you don't have to stand out as much as a safety. And if your tackles are over 100 as a safety, unless you're a box safety like an Ed Reed or a Troy Palomalu, it's probably not a good stat to have over 100 tackles as a safety. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just remember 2019, the Giants signed Antoine Bethea to a one-year deal in free agency. Leads the team in tackles. And then he's off the team the, the next year. <laughs> Lovely. Um, <laughs> Hank, who do you got for the Giants, man? I mean, it's been a long time coming, but we got to talk about our team just a little bit here tonight. Just a little bit. Uh <laughs> Well, I mean, obviously, it's Big Blab. Uh, I would have to say Leonard Williams. As I mentioned earlier on the show, it seems to me like despite the elbow injury, he's been getting like seven or eight tackles a game. And I have a feeling he's going to have another good performance to close out the season. And he has been one of the few Giants that has shown up to play over the course of the second half. And that's with all the speculation about the head coach. And that's with an injury, too. So a big, major, major props to him. And by the way, fun fact, he won the 2021 George Young Ernie Accorsi Good Guy Award. 21st Daniel Award given among Giants players. I think that's really cool. And over the course of the season, he has had 77 tackles, 13 hits on quarterback and five and a half sacks. I can definitely see him having a strong impact in this game. So I think Leonard Williams is definitely a no-brainer for me. Yeah. I mean, he's been the guy all year long. McKinney's been really good. Five interceptions. He's a guy to look out for. Ten passes defended. Lorenzo Carter, Hank, it's been so nice of him to show up this late in the season. You're right. On contract year. Four sacks and four pressures in the last four games. But – for me, it's Saquon Barkley. Only reason why I'm wearing his jersey tonight. I'm not even the biggest Barkley fan. But um, <laughs> Barkley, I think there's going to be a lot of added pressure for him before uh, he enters the fifth-year option next year off his rookie deal. Barkley has 563 yards on the season. He's still not the team's leading rusher. So that's just a, a real shame that Devontae Booker still is the leading rusher on this football team. We're heading into the last week of the season. I mean, I think that tells you all you need to know about the Giants' offensive struggles this season. But, Marty, if there's a player on the Giants, right, that you would steal and bring on the Washington <laughs> football team, who would it be and why? Can I get one offensive and one defensive? Sure. Cool. I'll start on the defensive side. Cornerback James Bradbury. I've always liked his game when he was in Carolina. I thought when Ron Rivera moved to Washington and he was a free agent, was a match made in heaven, needed a cornerback. Well, unfortunately, we didn't get him. I can only can attest to what I see from the outside, but I know last year he played great, and he usually plays really well against us. And then offensively, I'd love to steal that guy whose jersey you're wearing, Saquon Barkley, Penn State graduate, loved watching him play. I think he would be suited for a career, uh, a better career if he didn't wear the big blue. You might be right about that. Might yeah, be right I mean, it just, he's just, I think he's, I still think he's a generational talent at, yeah. At running back, I think the injury definitely put a damper on this season. I think you'll see a better Barkley next year. Plus, it's a contract year. It seems like NFL players always catch that juice when it's that time. But uh, I just feel like he's a guy that if you can centralize that offense around him, he can be special. And I truly think if the Giants do the right thing this offseason, they get a good GM to come in that helps fix the offensive line. The Giants are in a good spot heading into 2022 because they have a fourth place schedule because they will finish in last. And you're talking about a team that could potentially float around 500 next year if all goes right. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's if all goes right. If everybody stays healthy. <laughs> I mean, I think 
eight, nine wins would be the ceiling, and then the floor would be similar to what we did this year, four four wins. And we unfortunately hit the floor this year. But, um, yeah, Barkley and Bradbury, those are two really good picks. Now, I know yeah. you guys acquired William Jackson in the, in the offseason. Is he out on Sunday? I believe he is out, and if he did play, he wouldn't be much of a factor. He's been definitely a guy that's been disappointing so far this season. We let Ronald Darby walk for this guy, paid him even more money. I was told prior to from Bengals fans, great man coverage guy, and we don't play much man coverage. So it's, it was an interesting sign this for this offseason, but hopefully um, he can turn it around next year because we've got him for another three. Yeah, and I remember when you signed Darby a year or two ago, it was a one-year $4 million deal. Yeah. You caught steal. him on a bargain. Absolute steal. Um, I think Darby's knock was is that he never really played a true 16-game season. Always hurt, and for us, he was durable, dependable. We let him go. I think he was banged up early in the season for the Denver Broncos, but um, he ended up finishing the season. I think he actually played pretty well out there for a good defense. And I'm looking at Washington's injury report on Sunday. Curtis Samuel, hamstring injury. He hasn't been healthy all year. What a disappointment that signing was because I thought, no. you know, I mean, I thought he'd be a good slot receiver for you guys. Yeah, um, cheers cheers to uh, Curtis Samuels, the only guy I think in the NFL that played five snaps, been hurt every week, but did not land on the IR at all. So cheers yeah. to him. <laughs> and then Ricky Steele Jones dealing with a concussion as well. Um, yeah. You mentioned uh, Sammy Reyes at tight end potentially. Um, so I, I don't really know like like who would be that go to player over the middle of the field. You're probably ta- looking at like Adam Humphreys, JD McKissick, guys who you can hit yeah. underneath that could move the chains. Yeah, so. certainly. And and rookie tight end John Bates out of Boise State, fourth round pick, has definitely um, been our best tight end, and he's been a great player. And just getting started, well, I think he could have a great career in Washington. I think the Giants are going to struggle against Montez Sweat as well. If he plays, I don't know what his issue is. I know he hasn't been practicing much this week. And then yeah. Sam Cosme, limited with a hip, second round yeah. pick. Yeah, he's had a great year yeah. so far. Just can't stay healthy, Sam Cosby and, and Montez Sweat, too. Broken jaw. I think he's still going to just hang it up for the year and start looking at tropical vacations. <laughs> <laughs> and when we get to the Giants injury report, nine players who were limited, and then Mike Glennon's done for the year. Ellerson Smith was placed on IR. And there were still four other players who did not practice today one of them being Kadarius Tony, another one of them being John Ross. That's two wide receivers down on Sunday. So if I'm Washington right now, you just blanket Kenny Galladay with Kendall Fuller or whoever it may be, and it'll be smooth sailing. You just got to worry about Galladay and Barkley, you know, and you'll be victorious. I've got to laugh, Tom, every time I hear Tony's name. All I can think about was – the uh, review and preview draft special and your reaction of just absolute enjoyment with the Tony pick Uh, watching that live was something that was definitely a highlight of the 2021 sports podcasting world for me. (laughs) Wasn't that, I thought that was on the brew party. No, it was, but it was pretty much like half. It was like a a mix between review and preview and brew party people. And what was was so funny about it? What was so funny about it was I read a report about him a week before the draft that the Giants were interested, and I'm like, all right, because we need a slot receiver. We didn't need a bona fide number one in Kenny Galladay. I totally would have been fine with beefing up the line and getting good role players at wide receiver. I'm like, yes, I like Kadarius Toney because I I didn't think the Giants were drafting him in the first round. I thought they would draft him in the second round, but Mm -hmm. I had to play it up a little bit because everybody else was down and – I do think it was a good pick. If he could stay on the field, best missed tackle rate among all rookie wide receivers. He is yeah. good in the yards after the catch department as well. So I think he has a bright future ahead of him. He just needs to stay on that football field. But yep, certainly. thanks for pointing that out, Marty. That, that was yeah. definitely uh, <laughs> that was a great one. My reaction. 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody else was about three or four seconds, maybe even more before Tom. So everyone was chatting and talking. And then Tom comes in the left field and just screams how he absolutely loves it. I, it's, it's one that we're definitely going to have to rewatch in the 2022 draft. Yeah, abs- absolutely. <laughs> we'll probably have to do, um, you know, some draft talk too as we get closer. But let's pick this football game. Marty, we'll start with you. Um, who do you got winning on Sunday? And uh, you got a final score for us? Yeah, I think it's going to be a close one. I think that we will end up winning. Um, Ron Rivera is going to try to preach to these guys to finish strong. And Joe Judge has been talking a little smack. So, um, I definitely want to send him off on his way with a, a little up, uh, puts a little sour taste. So give me the red, give, give me the Washington football team 20 to 14. 2014. I think, wow, Marty, you have a scoring two touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's really generous. I know, I know your defense has been subpar this year, but wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hank, <laughs> what do you got for us, Hank? 23 10 Washington. All right. Well, you have the Giants scoring a touchdown. Yeah, somehow. <laughs> I also have the Giants scoring a touchdown. I think Washington's going to win by a final score of. 16 to 13. That's a good score. Affair. Yeah, it yeah. is a weird score. Um, it's going to be interesting. We all have Washington winning clean sweep. That means hopefully it goes the other way, but highly doubtful. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> Marty, is there anything you wanted to add here on this Giants-Washington game heading into Sunday? No, no. I, I mean, it's just unfortunate. I wish this was a different turn of events and we were playing on Sunday night against you guys for a win and get in scenario. I think they're one of the best in sports, but unfortunately we're in the both in the position where we're looking towards the off season and excited to see what both of these teams do, especially at the quarterback position moving forward. And, uh, you know, appreciate that. Appreciate the invite onto the show and maybe, Next year when we meet up for the Week 18 matchup, it'll be a lot more exciting. Absolutely. I I think another thing, too, is four months ago, we thought this game would be a win and end game, right? We thought this would be the Sunday night football game, and sadly, it's not. We also potentially thought that these two teams might be the top two teams in the the division again. They're the bottom two teams. But Marty – if you can just uh, plug your podcast, intercept your lunch, and where people can find that, because obviously I've always thought it's a very clever podcasting name. So why don't <laughs> you tell the folks where they can find all your great content? Certainly, certainly. Intercept your lunch. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at int underscore your underscore lunch. We've taken off the holiday season, hoping to gear it back here soon. But with the Washington football team kind of, going down the drain. The motivation isn't there. So um, playoff football around the corner where we're going to fire this thing back up and uh, looking forward to another year with working with you guys, covering football and all other different sports. Absolutely. And we'll have to try to get you on our draft show this year. That's going to be certainly uh, a lot of fun. But Marty, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck to you on Sunday, and we will talk to you very soon. Okay. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, Marty.